Insulin resistance is a complicated thing, but we don't have to make it complicated all the time. Okay, when we look at the big picture and what we are facing as a whole, we really are dealing with an inability to get fuel into a cell. And that's all there is to it. Okay, insulin resistance means that glucose cannot get into a cell, so the cells are improperly fueled. Now, this is a problem on multiple levels. For one, you're inadequately fueled. Okay, that's gonna cause problems in and of itself downstream of that. But additionally, it's going to eventually lead to more metabolic issues and significant weight gain if it's left out of control, right? Because it takes time, but eventually that insulin resistance will trigger more fat to ultimately accumulate. Now, I'm not here to say that magnesium is a magic bullet for this, but it's one brick in the wall of all these things that we need to pay attention to. When we look at the overall observational studies, in addition to the mechanistic action of magnesium with insulin, it's pretty clear that we have a magnesium issue and it needs to be addressed. So let's go ahead and dive in. After today's video, check out Element. They are a really awesome electrolyte. Sodium, potassium, magnesium. 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium. I just did a 35 mile, 35 pound fasted ruck where I consumed nothing but Element electrolytes alongside a couple of really awesome people. I'll tell you, it kept me going. And the simplicity of it is, we need those minerals. And they have awesome tastes that make it fun, especially even when you're fasting and you're not eating and all you can consume is electrolytes. So I put a link down below so that you can get your element, but also get a free sample pack whenever you make a purchase. So when you make that purchase, you can get that free sample pack and give that sample pack to some friends that maybe wanna try all the different flavors. So that link is down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. That's drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Tip, go for the mango chili, because it's my favorite. Okay, so there's a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that took a look at 234 people with metabolic syndrome. And four times per year, they measured their magnesium intake and also what is called their HOMA IR. HOMA IR is their lagging indicator of insulin resistance. It basically gives them a number of how insulin resistant is this person? How long has insulin and how high has insulin been circulating through the bloodstream? Well, what they found here is that those in the highest quartile of magnesium consumption ended up having a 71% reduction in developing an elevated insulin resistance level compared to the lowest quartile. Simply put, those that consumed more magnesium were at significantly, 71%, less risk of developing insulin resistance. But that's not enough data. Let's look at some more. There was a study published in Diabetes Care that looked at 4,497 people that found very similar things when looking at a 20-year follow-up, measuring people's magnesium intake alongside a couple of other things like C-reactive protein and some other stuff, and then following up 20 years later. Well, they found there was an inverse correlation between magnesium intake and inflammation. Their C-reactive protein levels were usually lower when magnesium was higher, and their levels of insulin resistance were lower when their magnesium was higher. They also ended up having a 47% less chance of developing type 2 diabetes when their magnesium was in the highest level. Okay, well, correlation does not always equal causation. But still, the data is pretty strong, right? Especially in large human cohorts like this. So now we get granular because personally, I could look at observational studies all day, but I always find potential flaws. I like mechanistic studies overlaid with that. I like to understand the why. And there's plenty of data pointing to the why. So magnesium deficiencies can affect various channels, okay? You have to remember that magnesium is electrical. Okay, so when we are deficient in magnesium, that means that we might have too much calcium. Calcium and magnesium work together to excite and relax, excite and relax. And this can affect electrical channels that allow insulin to be released from the pancreas. Inside the pancreas, you have what are called pancreatic beta cells, and these are the primary insulin producers. Well, these insulin producer cells rely on two very important things to do their job properly. One, they need to receive a chemical signal from glucose, from sugar. When we consume carbohydrates, the glucose is the chemical messenger, the chemical signal that signals the pancreatic beta cell to do something else. The next important pathway that's very critical is the electrical signal. This electrical signal is a cascade from the chemical signal 
that is called the KATP uh, channel. And if you have insufficient levels of magnesium, that channel doesn't open and close properly. So basically, the function of the beta cells becomes limited in an electrical fashion. So you're disturbing this electrical signal out of the beta cell, thereby inhibiting how much overall insulin it can release. Okay. So not only could it inhibit or impair the insulin release, it could trigger it to release too much. Basically, you're causing a myriad of different issues that are making the pancreatic beta cells just electrically kind of go cattywampus. So produce too much or don't produce enough, leaving glucose levels high. That's why when you look at magnesium and you can see fasting glucose levels potentially elevated, but you can also see insulin levels elevated because maybe it's triggering too much, maybe it's not triggering enough. We need to be paying attention to this because there's a number of different factors that we don't even realize. And when you look again, come back to the observational data for a second as justification to say, hey, I guess I should just have more magnesium because if I have more, it at least puts me into this quartile where I'm at a better chance of not developing diabetes or not developing insulin resistance. Forget the mechanistic stuff for a second. That's just for the nerdy people. That's the why. The data is pretty clear. And we are in a state where we are deficient in magnesium and calcium levels are high because everything's fortified with calcium because for a while we thought that was the most important thing. But I think most researchers now know that calcium is important, but they're all important and they should be matched, right? They should be equal because it's electricity. You're not going to have six grounds connected with one hot, right? You're not going to have six hots connected with one ground. You're going to keep things balanced. I'm not an electrician, but I know that much, right? So what I would recommend is generally speaking, a good baseline is four to 500 milligrams via supplementation. Although I don't like to push heavy supplementation. I usually like magnesium uh, that is called dimagnesium malate because dimagnesium malate is a more universal sustained release magnesium. Okay. And then when it comes down to quicker acting, there are things like magnesium sulfate, which might give you diarrhea if you go heavy on it, but it might help you if you start having a really bad headache. Okay. Another one that you may want to try is magnesium glycinate bound to glycine. It can help you go to sleep. Okay, that's one you take at night to help you relax that way. Uh, magnesium threonate can have some components that cross through the blood brain barrier easy, being a little bit better for mental focus and mental relaxation. But in general, dimagnesium malate is a nice balanced one. And then from there, I like to just keep my sodium levels moderate, my potassium levels in check so that I have this nice even keel where I'm not losing too much. That's what people forget. You can take in magnesium, but if you're not also taking in sodium, then you're just going to excrete things because sodium helps you retain a little bit more. That's why I usually end up talking about like element and things like that because they're a little more sodium focused. But I don't want the net impression of this video to be go buy this electrolyte. That's not what I'm after. My net impression for you is get magnesium rich foods in, supplement magnesium. I don't care how you do it, but just be conscious of it. I'll see you tomorrow.